Okay, so I've seen a lot of people trying to get uh, HDMI in on a laptop and uh, a lot of people think that they've got an HDMI socket so it must be an input on their laptop but it isn't. Uh, there are a couple of Alienware laptops that have HDMI in but uh, if you really want to plug something HDMI into a laptop the best way is by a capture device. So like this Ava Media capture device but you'll actually find that you may still have problems because uh, a lot of things are, are restricted uh, but uh, this method will allow you to play pretty much everything HDMI through you can see I've got a PlayStation 2 running through my 2010 MacBook so an old MacBook here uh, and basically the way I'm doing this so the PlayStation 2's got an HDMI adapter but it could be any HDMI device that goes into a splitter an HDMI splitter uh, which is an important bit because if you don't have that it's going to get restricted once it goes through the splitter and into the capture device that then sends it via USB to the computer so this is a MacBook uh, you can see that there's the desktop uh, and if I show it, it's running OBS at the moment which is a game capture piece of software so if I press escape you can see how it's running through there and even if I uh, basically start using it but it's surprisingly responsive I, I didn't think it was, I thought it was going to have more input lag, but actually, uh, I mean, depending on the game, but I think pretty much most games are playable on it, and also you can run operating systems or watch TV through it. So say, for instance, there's content that you can get on your phone that you can't get on your Windows laptop or MacBook. As I say, it can be a much older computer and still do this, because the hard job is pretty much being done by this device. Uh, and the sound comes out of the MacBook speakers, but I can also take sound directly from here so I can send it through a speaker but let's uh, have a look I'm, so, I'm not sat square on to this so it's not, it's not ideal but, uh, but just to show you that it's, that it's running and works nicely oh that's not a very good landing uh, if I get my hands in the shot you'll see me controlling it at the same time as well so let's jump out of there land in a manual and flip in there oh that didn't work quite so well but uh, So this could be a PlayStation 3, a PlayStation 4, uh, an Xbox One, an Xbox 360, a Switch. Uh, you could run a Chromecast through your computer. You could run an Amazon Fire Stick. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I've got my previous video shows a Raspberry Pi running on it as well. Uh, but, uh, but all of that works fine. Now the capture device itself, uh, I paid £65 for uh, from CEX. The HDMI splitter uh, was, uh, I think it's about £5. I'll put a link in the description to all of these bits. Uh, but it, it surprised me as how well it runs. Uh, and there are a lot of games that are definitely worth playing on this. I've tried all sorts of things through it. So let's show you uh, it plugging my iPhone through. So let's turn off my PlayStation. And let's unplug the HDMI adapter from the PlayStation and then plug that straight into this uh, Apple HDMI adapter into my phone. And you'll see that quite soon it will come up. There you go. So there is my phone. Uh, and if I want to use, say, for instance, YouTube on there, I can go into library uh, and have a look, play a video. Well, there's an advert coming out. I can, while it's playing, I can turn this off. Let's get some volume on here. So it can last and last up to 24 hours. Switch to the new Google Pixel 4. Phone made the Google Way. When a 21 year old prince performed on a. So you can see I can turn my phone off. That's running through uh, and that's working through. And you can see from the lip sync. It looks fine. But also, if I was to pause that, uh, I mean, it works with with any pretty much any content that will will play through this. So if I, for instance, get a TV, go to iPlayer, let it pick any old content. So let's just pick something like that. Hit play. Once it's playing, I can skip back and forth through that content as normal. I can switch off my display. As you can see, it works fine. If I press escape, you'll see that the interface changes because it's showing all the capture. I mean, there's loads of things you can change in here. 
So this Mac is 1280 by 800, so it's a, a lower resolution Mac. Um, I'm going to try my daughter's laptop, which is a Windows laptop, which is 1080, so I'll try that in a different video. But as you can see, that all works fine. So if we go to games, uh, I'll pick a game. I've got a Bluetooth controller. It's going to be a bit loud. And again, I'm at a funny angle here, but I can still see what's going on. Nice skills. But you can see that works well and feels pretty responsive. If I go back out and pick something like Minecraft, and I think you can turn off the can I, can you turn off the display? I'll soon find out. I'll play a little bit of Minecraft and then I'll see if you can turn off the display. Oh no, I don't want to do. I'll do a normal world. There you go. So you can see, and this is an iPhone 7, so it's not a modern phone by any stretch. Oh, of course, it would be going dark, wouldn't it? Well, let's turn off the phone and see what happens. All right. So turning off the phone on that, it seems to be video that it that it doesn't mind. Uh, so let's try Real Racing 3, and let's go back to full screen. Pop some volume up a little bit. So, and you can see if I get the controller in there, just to give you an idea that it, it is. <laughs> I'm playing it terribly, but it is playable. It'd be much better if I was more straight on. Nice. But it, it really is, I mean, I, I guess you must, you must adapt to input lag, but there, there really isn't a great deal of input lag. Uh, obviously other capture devices may, may provide a lot of input lag, but this, you know, I'm watching it and, you, and I'm, I'm using the controller and it doesn't feel like it's significantly behind or anything. So if you're a competitive gamer, obviously don't go out and spend £65 and then complain to me that there is a bit of lag. But, uh, but for a lot of games it's perfectly playable, for video it's obviously fine because it doesn't matter if there's input lag on that. So, and let's try Jet Car Stunts. Oh, wrong button, wrong button. Not a good start. Why is it accelerating than that? Ah, right button. Not, not trigger. And you can see like this, oh, it's working nicely. So, I'll run through it again, if I just turn that off. Uh, and hit escape so you get back to the menu and also do that so we get back to the Mac. Uh, so we're running a, in this case, iPhone going through the official HDMI adapter uh, which is going into this HDMI splitter, out from there into the Ava Media capture card uh, and there's two USBs in here, one of them is powering the splitter uh, one of them is powering the Ava Media uh, because that needs separate power uh, and that's it that, that is uh, how you get HDMI to run through uh, a MacBook, and this will work with much newer MacBooks than mine. Obviously, 2010 is pretty old, uh, but also it will work with Windows, but I need to do a separate video on that because it's obviously a slightly different process. Okay, so on the screen, a couple of things that you might find you need to change. Uh, down here, if you go to Advanced Audio Properties, I found that unless the... Uh, the volume level was up so on zero my Mac was really really quiet um, so I put it up to 15 dB here uh, and then this setting is on monitor and output but also there is another bit on settings uh, which was I think it was under audio on here yeah under audio on here so under mic auxiliary audio you need to have it on live gamer portable 2 plus or whatever capture device you're using uh, and then that's 
pretty much all you need to do. I don't think there was anything else. Yeah, that was the only two settings I changed. So I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.